Hi, I'm Cade, and besides Scrooge, I'll be portraying Peter and Jack. Hi, I'm Mary, and I'll be portraying the Ghost of Christmas Present. Hi, I'm Shelby, and I'll be speaking for Miss Cratchit. My name is Kaylee, and I will portray Martha and Scrooge's niece. Hi, I am Nicole, but I will portray Belinda. Hi, I'm Robbie, and I'll be portraying Topper. Hey, it's Sophia, and I'm playing Jane. Our special guest is Miss Thorson's son, Zachary, who will be playing Tiny Tim. Scrooge has just returned from his walk in the past. Per Marley's warning, he now waits for the second spirit, trying and failing to stay awake. Take me home. No more. I can't bear it. Take me home, spirit. Do you hear me? Take me home. This... Wait. Spirit. Was I dreaming? Spirit. A dream. It's all, not all a dream, is it? Jacob said three spirits. I'll wait for the second one and be ready. It will not catch me by surprise. It will not catch me by surprise. In rolls a cart filled with barrels and cakes and all kinds of food associated with the holidays. A spirit full of life, who is the soul of kindness and the strength of love and merriment, sits on the cart. The spirit is dressed in festive garb and sneaks up on Scrooge's bed, peeks inside the curtain, and with great mischief the spirit smiles and then sings at the top of their voice. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning. Ah, what? 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 Stop that noise! Please! And what was in these ships all three on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day? And what was in these ships all three on Christmas Day in the morning? No. Look here. I ask you kindly to please stop that noise. Why are you plaguing me? Are you the second spirit? Did Jacob send you? The Virgin Mary and Christ were there on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. The Virgin Mary and Christ were there on Christmas Day in the morning. What is it you want? I am the ghost of Christmas present. Scrooge averts his eyes and hangs his head. Look upon me. Have you never seen the likes of me? Spirit. Conduct me where you will. Touch my robe. We are now in a room of many people who are down on their luck, but who are also sitting and eating a warm and beautiful Christmas dinner. What is it you're sprinkling on the food, spirit? It's a flavor all my own. And does it make the food taste better? Anything freely given makes food taste better, especially to the poor. If you give it to them for nothing, They'll never learn to take care for themselves. Did you not receive good care and kindness from your parents? My mother passed away at a young age, and my father sent me to the Paris Church School. The minister, who was my teacher, kept all of my presents my family sent me for himself. He told me that my suffering would bring, bring me closer to God. There are many who would use the name of God for their own gain. Their trickery, deceit, and crimes will be remembered. If they do not mend their ways, they will suffer the same fate as Jacob Marley. They did that to themselves. Yes, spirit. But these are complete strangers. Do unto others, Ebenezer. We have much to see. Hold my robe. The ghost of Christmas present takes Scrooge to a small house. It is very apparent this house has never seen luxury. It is a mean dwelling, built only to house the poorest type of householder. Why are we here? Do people actually live in this place? 
<laughs> Mrs. Cratchit's youngest children are racing around her feet, playing a game of hide and seek. One hides behind a chair, while another hides beneath the table that Mrs. Cratchit is setting, mismatched, chipped, and broken china. Now be careful, William. You don't want to ruin your nice clothes before Father comes home. Mother, where should I set the gravy dish? Put it on the table there, Belinda. Let's make sure your father has his fill first. It's not every day we have such fine food. I love the smell of Christmas dinner. Mother, look! It's Martha! Martha, what a sight for sore eyes! Come, let me give you a hug. Mother, it's Father. He's coming down the street. Mother, hide before he sees you. Yes, let's play a joke on Father. Quickly, into the kitchen! Martha hides just as Bob Cratchit comes into the kitchen. He is cheerful, but there is a sense of melancholy in him. On his shoulders there is a young boy between the ages of five and seven years old. Bob takes him down and sets him on the bench. He also takes a crutch off his back and hands it to his son. Bob, come, get ready. We'll be eating soon. Wonderful, Mrs. C. Everything smells so delicious. We should be thankful that we have so much. Now, where's my Peter? Here I am, Father. Peter goes to Bob and no, gives father. him a warm hug. She won't be He's coming. He's then followed by Belinda, who also gives her father a hug and a kiss. Father, you smell just like winter. I love that smell. Thank you, dear. Now, where's Martha? Has she come yet? Not coming? Not coming on Christmas? No, Papa. She needed to work this afternoon and could not come for dinner. Bob is obviously very hurt by this, and there is a visible shift in his spirits. Ah, uh, yes. I suppose she needs to work. Still, it would have been nice to have the whole family. Martha, at this moment, pops out of the kitchen. Here I am, Papa. Aha! Martha! My dear, dear Martha! He returns the hugs and kisses as if he had not seen her in a very long time. How wonderful it is to see you. Now my whole family is here for Christmas. Bob, it's time to eat. She is carrying a platter, and on the platter is what looks like a very small chicken. It is scrawny, and would not even normally make a good meal for a single man. Here's the goose. And what a lovely goose it is. Smell it, the smell of Christmas dinner. And here's the turnips to go with it. No one can cook turnips like you, my dear. Oh, what have we here? Gravy to go over the turnips? This is the best Christmas ever. Thank you, Mother. Thank you, Father. Spirit. Is this all they have for Christmas dinner? Shouldn't such a large family have more than a bite each? And how would they pay for such luxury? Well, I had no idea, Spirit. There seems to be something wrong with the little boy's leg. Is he going to be all right? If the family can find the money to pay the doctor, he will be fine. But how can they find the money? Before we enjoy this delicious repast, let us give thanks. All Cratchits bow their heads. Lord, we thank you for this excellent, wonderful meal which we are about to receive. We thank you for all the good things that you have given us, especially for the wonderful family here all at once for Christmas. We pray that you will help us to heal Tiny Tim, Lord, and know that if you show us the way, we can do it. Also, please bless those who are less fortunate than us and those who need our love and comfort. Lord, please bless the founder of this feast, Ebenezer Scrooge. Amen. Bless Mr. Scrooge? Why will we ask the Lord to bless the likes of him? Mother, if Papa did not have a job, we wouldn't be able to eat like kings tonight. Of course you're right, Peter. God bless Mr. Scrooge. Yes, God bless Mr. Scrooge. Spirit, I'll help Tiny Tim. I'll pay for his operation, and I'll pay Bob a better wage. Please, Spirit, only tell me that he will live. This is a spirit of Christmas. But don't forget, Scrooge, this time comes but once a year. I'll keep the spirit all year long, if you just say that he will live. Well now, that was an excellent goose, Mother. What could be better? Mother walks in with a pudding. All this and a pudding too. You have outdone yourself, my love. Peter and Belinda, fetch that pudding. Three cheers for the lady of the house. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Spirit, take me home. I must start right now. I'll bring them a wonderful dinner, and the boy will have the finest doctors. Please, Spirit, we must go home so that I can start. We have much to see before I bring you home. You have many a lessons to learn. I will be a better man, I, I promise. Grab my robe. Ha <laughs> ha! 
You'll never believe what he said then. Most likely something terribly shameful. That's right. He said humbug on Christmas. <laughs> See, more shame on him. Christmas, a humbug, shame on him. Now, now, my dear. We should take pity on him. He's a comical old fellow, he is. And not as pleasant as he might be. But his offenses carry their own punishment. I'll say nothing against him. I'm sure he's very rich. At least you always tell me so. What of it? His wealth is of no use to him. He does no good with it. He doesn't make himself comfortable, and he doesn't have the satisfaction of thinking that he's ever going to benefit us with it. <laughs> I have no patience with him. I don't blame you. Neither do I. He's a foolish old man. Oh, I have. I'm just sorry for him. I could never be angry with him if I tried. It's he that suffers. He takes it into his head that he doesn't like us and won't come to dine with us. And what's consequence? He doesn't lose much of a supper. <laughs> well, I think he loses a fine supper. That's right. He should have tried the goose. Well, I'm glad to hear it because I don't think much of these young housekeepers. What do you think, Topper? I wouldn't know. I live alone and that makes me a wretched outcast. I have no right to express an opinion one way or the other. What were you saying, Fred? He never finishes his thoughts. He's so ridiculous. <laughs> I was only going to say that the consequence of him taking a dislike to us and not joining the fun is that he loses some pleasant moments, which could do him no harm. I'm sure he loses more pleasant company than he could find sitting alone in that draughty old house of his, alone with his thoughts. I will ask him every year to join us, because I pity him. He may hate Christmas all he wants, but he will think better of it if I keep going there in a good mood every year and saying, Uncle Scrooge, how are you? If it only makes him think to leave 50 pounds for his clerk, that's something. I think I shook him yesterday. Yes, I think I did. <laughs> I know what we should do next. He quickly places a blindfold on the Topper's head and places a bell in the hands of one of the young ladies. Now, Topper, find the bell! <laughs> hey, you can see. Topper, you're supposed to find the bell. No, the bell, not the girl. Oh, well done, Topper. You she got her where you are. She almost had him fooled. Yes, and no, everyone. Let's have some more fun, shall we? <laughs> well, Topper. Shall I think of the first thing? Me, pick me, pick me, 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 me. Come, Ebenezer. We have much to do. Time is short. Wait, wait. It's another game. A one half hour, Spirit. Please, one half hour, please. Okay, I have it. Is it alive? Yes. Does it make noise? Yes. Does it sing? No. Is it an animal? Yes. Does it growl? No. Is it a cat? Is it something we ride? No. An elephant? Does it wear clothes? Yes. A monkey? Does it buy its own clothes? Yes. A monkey? Are they new? No. Is the animal as mean as can be? Okay, okay. So a big monkey? Yes. I've got it. You know what it is? Oh, good job, my dear. I still think it's a monkey. Go on, ask if it's a monkey. And what do you think it is, my dear? Why, it's your Uncle Scrooge. What? I, how do you figure that? You are correct. Don't I have the smartest wife ever? Good job, my dear. Ah, spirit, take me away from here. How can I enjoy this party when I've caused my own nephew to say such things? I must go home so that I can begin to change things. I want to love and be loved again. I have been unkind. My uncle has given us plenty of merriment, and I think it would be ungrateful if we did not immediately drink to his health. To my Uncle Scrooge. To Uncle Scrooge. Spirit, our lives short. My life upon this globe is brief. It ends tonight. Tonight at midnight. Listen, the time is coming near. From under the spirit's robe, we see a gaunt hand and a dirty foot appear. Spirit, forgive me. Is What is that strange thing protruding from your robe? It looks like a foot or a claw. It might be 
a claw. There's not much flesh on it. Look here. The spirit opens their robe, and out come two children who are gaunt, dirty, and starving. There might be bugs crawling on them, and the boy has the word doom written on his forehead. Look, Scrooge, do not turn your head. Look. Fine, children. Spirit, are they yours? The spirit motions to the children. They are man's. They cling to me, appearing from their fathers. This girl is want. This boy, ignorance. Beware of both of them, and anyone like them. Most of all, beware of the boy. For I see written in his brow is doom. Unless it is erased, all will suffer. Deny it, Scrooge. Slander those who tell it to you. Let yourself be taken over by it, and see what happens. Have they no refuge or resource? Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? The spirit and children disappear, and there's a great tightening and blackout. Scrooge is left alone to contemplate his own thoughts. Mr. Scrooge, Merry Christmas Eve. God bless you, Mr. Scrooge. You promised that I was only work a half day on Christmas Eve. You've never changed that. You always have to change. Him taking a dislike to us, and not to show him his partner sitting at death's doorstep, and him working away. No, stop, please, please. Oh no, please.